carpenters. Plumberparts.co.uk Ruska Plumber Boom! Welcome to today's Ask the Plumber video. I'm angry today, so I've got some wood and an axe. So I'm going to smash it up because basically I hate carpenters. And anything wood related needs to die. Anyway, first question of the day is a bloke or a bird called Itansi? They say, hi, how do I stop water hammer happening on my pressurised system when turning the hot water on in the morning? Happens for about two seconds. Seems to only happen when pipes are cold. Cheers. If it only happens on a particular tap, then the best thing you can do is actually change over the washer itself. <coughs> But if it happens throughout the whole system, you can get a thing that's called an anti-hammer device that you can put on that hot feed or the cold feed, whatever's hammering. They're very similar to an expansion vessel. So if you've got your pipe coming through and you've got your tap here and this keeps hammering, if you've got lots of taps coming off it, this will work. You get your anti-hammer device, you install it on the pipe. Basically, it's just a rubber diaphragm with an air there. And what that does, it takes all the buffer and stops that hammering. So that could be one of the solutions to your problem. Next question, please. Chunk Norris wants to know whether a dog can smell its own fart. <coughs> now this might not be plumbing related, but I can tell you that a dog can smell its own fart. My dog once fell asleep, farted, woke itself up, smelled its bum, and then got up and walked out. Next question. Question here from Kathleen Harrison. She says, can you advise, I just had a new shower and I'm told I need a new shower pump. I was quoted for this, but he said I needed to put another tank in the loft. Is this normal, two tanks for one shower? And he said it would take nearly one day to fit. Please advise as I don't know where to go from here. Thank you. <coughs> Cup of coffee. If you've got a really, really small tank in your loft, he you might well have to put a shower pump in because there's a risk that you could drain the loft tank out. The shower pump would go dry and burn the impellers out and ruin your shower pump. Also, depending on the complexity of this job, it could well take a day to fit. So, like, it could well be correct to me. Next question. Fibre washer. Dear Plumber Parts, I have a very small willy. Can you please give me some advice as to how I can stretch it? The wife calls me acorn and I can't find it at times when I try to pull it out for my wife fronts. Number one, I can't help you. Number two, why are you wearing wife fronts? Dan Little comes in. I've since been Googling and read a little on these Shaw Stop Remote Stopcocks. Have you used them before? Now, these are the big remote stopcocks that have the stopcock is under the sink or something like that, and then you have a remote button on the top, big blue button usually. They're really, really handy for elderly people, uh, elderly occupants, because if they've got a problem, they don't have to get under a, a sink or anything to turn it off, and they can press this button and stop it. If we get a chance, we will make a video. In the meantime, if you want to buy one, we'll leave a link for them in the description below so you can click there and, and have a little look. Dan Little again, question. Hi James, my stopcock won't actually fully turn off the mains water supply. The tap still trickle a bit with water. I've tried turning the stopcock back and forward and even with a bit of WD-40, but no luck. I don't have a water meter, so I don't know where the external stopcock is or even if there is one. Any tips? Dan, firstly, if you live in an area like a village or anything like that, it's always handy to go and speak to somebody who lives next door. They might know, especially some old boy who's really nosy. Secondly, if you can't find the stopcock outside and you've got this problem and you're pretty sure this is all you've got, you're gonna have to get hold of your water company and they're gonna have to come out and have a look at it for you. There is another thing you can do, and it's very, very difficult to do since you've got that trickle going through. If you can find a way of stopping that trickle, putting a, a tap hose on the end and freeze the pipe. Now, this terrifies most plumbers and for good reason because it is really really hard to do you need a lot of patience and the freezer kits are quite expensive as well but that is an option for you if you want to go down that route otherwise go out the front of your house try and find the stopcock get yourself a stopcock key i'll leave a link to one in the description below every homeowner in the country should have their own stopcock key failing that i have doused before to find water pipes and it does work maybe we'll do a video on that sometime in the future but that'll probably be around halloween in fact that's a good idea yeah halloween video Remind us. Benji Ferrero said he'd like to see us answering questions while me and Matt, the apprentice lad, engage in a bit of good old fashioned jousting. I've asked Matt about this. He says his agent doesn't cover decapitation or anything like that and he knows he'd lose as well because I'm class at that. Phil Rab 66 wants to do a bit of sparring next week while we answer the questions. Why does everyone want me to beat Matt up? Mohamed Foyaz asks on our video about how to balance heating systems, does the water flow in through the lock shield? It does. It can flow in or out of it but you should see the lock shield as a way of regulating the flow through the radiator especially if it has a thermostatic radiator valve at the other end 
this is the last question we're going to do today. The Inkster 78. Hey, loved your video on the unvented cylinder, especially the diagram. I've just bought a three story Victorian house and it will have full bathroom on each floor basin, toilet, bath, shower, with God knows how many radiators. At a guess, possible 10 to 15. More than likely, whatever system I decide will be positioned in the loft, which is fairly large. My question is Is a top of the range combi boiler going to be up to the job of supplying hot and cold water on demand and also supplying the 15 rads, even as I typed it, sounded unlikely? Or do I need some sort of system boiler with an invented indirect cylinder to give a good supply as and when required, even if it's at two places at once? Obviously, combi struggled with that. Any information you can give me would be great, and a diagram would be amazing. Hope to hear from you. Best regards, Nick. Well, Nick, I've thought long and hard about what we're going to do for a diagram on this, and really hard to put down into pictures and words what you should do. Yeah. Always go for an invented cylinder, okay? They're miles better than combi boilers. Their flow rates are better. If something goes wrong with the boiler, at least you've still got some hot water as a with your immersion as a backup. Always recommend people should put them in, unless you've got like one bathroom and one kitchen and it's a small flat, combi boilers are great then. So go for a standard system boiler with an invented cylinder. Miles better, especially when you've got that many rads and quite a few bathrooms. Train for edge. Right, I'm gonna go now. This new apprentice lad's driving us mental. It's all he does is moans. So Matt, if you're watching this, stop moaning. He's a lovely lad, really. He's going out on a date tonight, actually, with some bird. I hope your date's going well, Matt, as well. A little thing about dates and birds. I don't know a lot about women. I'm married. Don't ever take a bird to a cinema or a bowling alley on a date. Take them to the driving range. You know, you could show your golf swing and how you can drill a ball straight and far for 350 yards. And she could sort of duff her shots. You never know, she might be a pro golfer. She might nail it further than you do. But whatever happens, you'll be able to stand there together, have a little chuckle about what happened. And then afterwards, at the drinks and dinner stage, you've got something in common you can both talk about. It gives me an idea, actually, for where we should film the next Ask the Plumber video. I'm going to chop up more wood. Some of this stuff is rock hard. If I get through this in one go, I'll be well happy, but I don't think it's going to happen. <coughs> well, it's not a bad effort, is it? <coughs> there we go. You've got to remember to hold tight. So people, thanks for watching. Remember you can subscribe, you can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook, click on these links. We've left some links to the stuff mentioned in this video in the description below. I'll see you in our next video, which could be an instructional or it could be an Ask the Plumber. We've got a huge backlog to be honest. Some people said there can't be any more videos you can do on plumbing. You wouldn't believe how many more videos there are that we're going to be doing. And also, send us plumbing disaster photos because we retweet them and put them up on Facebook and on our website. Some of them are absolutely hilarious. So people remember, everyone, remember, everyone, <laughs> hold tight! Plumberparts.co.uk Ask a plumber!